Hey, what's up? So today I'm going to take you through the like final running of my Vimeo project for computer engineering. Real-time hand gesture control of a virtual object in augmented reality. Um, it's quite a mouthful, but it's really cool and it's working really nicely. And so, yeah, let me pop open my screen over here. And so basically the objective of the system is to be able to manipulate a virtual object using hand gestures. And you can do that, which is great. So over here I'm going to open up the... Um, the window here and you can see my virtual cube rotating based on the gestures that I showed with my hand and the gesture classifiers aren't super accurate and it could be a lot more accurate but it's because it's using a first principles CNN um, with a first principles data set and everything and the to get it to run in real time at 24 frames a second it's actually running at 30 frames a second here um, I had to reduce the size of the image that goes into the classifier and I had to just really like optimize optimize as much as possible and I made the trade-off for a lot of um, optimization and real-time performance with uh, accuracy. So my accuracy of my classifiers is not where it should be, but the speed is amazing, which is uh, the main goal of the system. And it's, it's the accuracy is still good enough to manipulate the object. So if I come in here and I come and grab the cube, you can see I can move it around, I can move it left, right, up and down. Um, and see, this is just with my hand, the connect over there uh, reads in the RGB and depth data, and it allows you to basically manipulate this virtual object. And obviously, like this is a cube for this example, but it could be anything else. Um, can move it backwards and forwards, left, right, down, and yeah, it's really cool. I'm really proud of it, considering it's using OpenGL in the background for uh, the virtual object rendering. It's using ah, first principles CNNs uh, for the gesture classifications. Um, there's some surface detection algorithms in the background using a ransack algorithm. Um, you can see that over here. Um, the, the different surface normals of the all, all the pixels in the image are calculated, um, and then the ransack algorithm is used on the left-hand side here to detect the surface of the table um, from starting surface normal, and that's really cool because it allows me to basically um, prevent collisions with the surface of the table. So if I take the cube here, move it around, and then if you watch the console, the output here on the bottom of the screen, and I try and move it straight down through the table, you can see there a surface collision occurring. Um, you might miss the print statements, but it basically allows me to not move the object through the bottom of the table. Surface collision, I don't know if you can see it, but it's happening there in the background besides um, all the other print statements. Because the thing's running at 30 frames a second, those print statements are 30 a second, so it's easy to miss things. Um, I also have an object detection system, so let me move the cube over to the side of the screen. Come on, bad boy. There we go. Um, if I bring this um, connect box over to the left-hand side of the screen, um, and I try and move the object through this box now, you're going to see a collision on the left-hand side. And if you saw that there, print statement, collision at left. Uh, come on. Oh, it's because this is too close to the camera. Um, come on. <laughs> As you can see, um, it's a little bit buggy. Um, I'm filming this uh, two days before my demo, um, just because I have to hand the hardware back straight afterwards. So there's one or two things I could still fix, um, but yeah, it's where I want it to be mostly. You can see there, collision at left. It's not allowing me to move the object further past the left-hand side. So it's my hand is going, but the object is not. And I want to move this object away. So now you can see I'm able to move my hand from the left uh, to the left and right of the image. So now I'm going to show you the rotation of the object. So I've got four different classifiers, an open and closed hand or fist classifier. So whether the hand is open or forming a fist and up uh, sideways, no, what's it? Uh, down, side, up. So down, side, up classifier, a left towards and right classifier as well as a down forwards and up classifier and this is so that the cube can be rotated about three separate axes uh, x y and z axes and you can get like a full nine degrees of freedom uh, as what is because the whole point of the system is to emulate a real world object and it's being able to manipulate those uh, axes is kind of the point of the real world uh, control of the object so i'm going to go here and i'm going to um come on i'm going to give stupid object <laughs> I'm going to go and point my hand up and you can see here with the downside up classifier as pointing upwards. I'm going to point it to the side now and you can see it, it doesn't recognize the middle gestures that well. Um, and then I'm going to point it down and it's going to rotate um, the object downwards uh, about, I'm not sure if it's the Y or the, the Z axis, which are going rotating downwards, rotating upwards. And yeah, you can see the difference there in the rotation of the cube. So here you can see me showing the uh, left symbol to the classifier and it rotating left. Here I'm showing it the towards classifier, it won't do any rotation. And then I'm showing it to the right and it rotates to the right. It's a bit confusing because it's rotating about all three gestures, uh, all three axes simultaneously with the three different gestures, but it's good enough. And if you know what to look for, you can see it nicely. Come on, bad boy, stay over there. 
Now I'm going to show you the down forward up classifier. So if I point the curve uh, downwards, um, oh, this way, yeah, it's going to rotate uh, down. If I'm pointed forwards, it won't do any rotation about that axis. And when I rotate, point it up, it's going to rotate upwards. And so changing between the down and up classifiers, you can see it a bit nicer. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, moving the cube around, left, right, trying to collide with the surface, trying to collide with other objects. It works really nicely and I'm really happy with the end result. The hand tracking gets a bit messed up as you can see when I put my face in because then it's registering my face instead of the cube. Um, and this is because in the background there's some um, uh, YCBCR color space segmentation happening and that's basically just extracting skin colored pixels from the background of the image um, and that's what you can see in this frame over here in the top left hand corner you can see it's just extracting uh, skin colored pixels and from there then detecting the largest skin colored region um, close to a particular edge of the frame and from that you can segment a really nice bounding box around the hand feed that into the gesture classifiers bam you've got your image and machine learning processing pipeline there and it's all from first principles which I'm really happy about. The training was done using TensorFlow um, because training back propagation from first principles and optimizing that is a mission. But the whole CNN that I built from first principles and is running my own code and formed the principal optimization of my project using M2 call um, multiprocessing and uh, was another thing that I did as well. Uh, flattening and using matrix multiplication instead of using for loops. I um, mean the convolution step that was M2 call as well as the max pooling step just to optimize the system and get it running much faster. And yeah, it runs at 30 FPS throughout the entire life cycle of the system and I'm really happy about that. But that's my main specification. The fact that you can move this, uh, operate the entire system at 30 FPS and it never stops becoming real time. That's the main part of the project. Um, if I go over quickly to my report, because that's quite impressive as well, if I do say so myself and I'm really happy with it. Uh, where is it? Here we go take you to the front page yeah i'm really happy with it it was exactly 75 pages the, the page upper page limit at the end of it and yeah i, I did all my different sections uh quite well if i do say so myself i'm really happy with the way it turned out obviously you can always do more work here's my seven page literature study obviously you can always do more work and things can always be better um but in the time given and actually getting the system to work alongside writing a really, really nice 100 page report i'm really happy with how it turned out um here's my design summary my overall system pipeline diagram with the multi-processing and the different classifiers running in their own processes some pseudo code um, some explanation of the color theory behind YCBCR, um, different early prototypes, um, the hand tracking and its results, um, the background behind my CNN and how that worked, um, as well as all the details of the maths of the convolution and the max pooling operation, um, class diagrams about the neural network. Since that took me the majority of the June, July holiday and uh, really allowed the whole classification and the actual control of the object to occur. Some more um, pseudocode, some real-time uh, optimization. Yeah, I did a couple of grid searches to determine what the best um, parameters for my neural networks would be. A convolutional neural networks to detect the different gestures, um, and basically um, trying different um, architecture setups to see how fast they would run and what effect they would have on the frame rates per second, as well as actually having a look at using my four different data sets, what the different accuracies would be given the different architectures um, and the different uh, test and validation and um, training data set accuracy and using that to make an informed decision about how large my neural networks would be. My neural networks were mostly, if I remember correctly, um, just stop the program running here. Um, my neural networks were mostly two convolutional layers with about a thousand hidden neurons, 16 and 32 filters in the um, convolution layers. And so not a big network by any means, but running it all from first principles, it was still enough to, with four classifiers, run uh, only at 30 FPS and much slower before multiprocessing uh, and some optimizations. But yeah, basically just some nice classes here representing my input, my convolution steps, um, the activation, all of the maths behind it. Here's forward propagation. And actually before I started training with TensorFlow, I built my entire own back propagation process uh, and it, it worked really nicely. It was just really slow. And so hence the need for TensorFlow. There's all the maths behind the back propagation, the max pooling, um, all the other things that happened. And yeah, I was really happy with the nice um, encapsulated class, object oriented uh, behavior of my neural network and the ability to just at the start of the program like hoi in a whole nother neural network by um, just quickly defining all the classes here and then defining the amount of layers and that that goes into each network. So I was really happy with that and it turned out really nicely. 
Um, there's some of the multi-processing functions, you know, the rotating the cube functions uh, with the GL rotate F. That's one of the OpenGL commands I had to use to rotate the graphical primitives in the background and uh, transform the model view matrix in order to get the cube rotating properly on top of the background information, getting fed in from the connect. Um, there's my main loop that gets run throughout the life cycle of the program. At the start, some calibration happens with the surface detection, being able to decipher the surface of the desk um, from a, a chosen starting pixel and then find that surf detected surface that I showed you earlier. Um, I have some saving of weights and calibration values in the background, some managing of the multiprocessing, some of the hand tracking, uh, the rotation history, because um, each time the, the cube has to be moved, you actually have to undo all of the rotations, move it, and then redo those rotations in order to uh, keep the, uh, the model view matrix kind of in sync with my um, world coordinate system in order to keep track of the object. And so yeah, a lot of stuff that went into the background that you don't see in that nice shiny final demonstration, but that I'm very proud of and very happy and covered a lot of uh, in my final report, which uh, obviously is what we mainly get marked on. So yeah, I think that's all I've got to show for my system. I'm really happy with it. I'm really looking forward to demoing it and presenting it in two days time. It's uh, stressful. Um, it's uh, 10 to five now in the evening, still here in the labs. Um, people have been demoing all day and I'm really happy uh, that my time is nearly here and I'm nearly finished with it. Um, I'm unfortunately not finishing Varsity with this uh, project presentation and demonstration. Uh, I have to write an exam the following day for that EDC module that I'm repeating but it'll be all good. Four hour exam, then I'm off and finished with university. And I'll think I'll make, I think I'll make a whole video about that last day of university because it's going to be an amazing day. But yeah, I'm really happy with my final year project. Uh, it was as hard as they say it was going to be. And I spent uh, literally months and months and months and over, I think it was 420 hours in the labs. Let me have a look. I have kind of kept a, a schedule of the amount of time, hours I've kept in the lab uh, throughout the year, in addition to all the work that I've done at home and in my own time. But over here you can see, um, come on, you can see I've done 496 hours in the lab so far this year. I've actually already been here for, what time did I get here this morning? Eight, 12. I've already been here at least four hours today. Uh, so that takes us to 500 hours in the labs already um, this year. I'm going to do a bit more at the end of this week and yeah, way more than I needed to do, but I found it really productive to be here and to work on it. And I'm really happy with the final result. Like, I can't describe to you how much pain and suffering has gone into it, um, but to develop a system from first principles has taught me so much about neural networks and machine learning and convolutional neural networks and um, integrating a, a whole system pipeline from like client requirements and the engineering process behind it and showing all the EXA um, Engineering Council of South Africa graduate attributes um, throughout the year and in everything that I've done. And yeah, I'm really happy with the final system and really happy to have it nearly done. Oh yeah, and <laughs> I never even mentioned it, but I also run the system um, a little bit uh, on a Latte Panda. It's an embedded platform. Um, so I'm gonna demonstrate that for my examiners as well. It runs very slowly though, at like three frames a second. And so um, it, can't, it can't run properly, but that's because I, I built it with the intention of running it on a PC, because that's what the original spec was. And I didn't optimize it at all for the Latte Panda. And so I, I won't get great marks for that, but it's, it's not that important in the context of my overall project. So yeah, I think that is everything I have to say about my final year project. Thank you so much for watching. I'm really looking forward to being done with this. And yeah, Varsity is nearly finished for me. Don't know what I'm gonna do with this channel and even my entire life after university because my identity revolves so much around university, but I'm looking forward to it. And so thank you for sticking with me all this time. Thank you for watching this video about my final year project. It's really been a great journey and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.